So in this video, I want to talk about grip. Grip is fundamentally really, really important. It's important to understand two things. There's not one way that you should hold the golf club. Two, the second thing is that there are certainly some ways that you should not hold the golf club. So what I tend to do when I'm teaching students, that's why I wanted to do this video, is particularly if I was teaching a beginner golfer, what I wouldn't do is I wouldn't say, hold the club like this. I wouldn't do that. What I would do is I would try and explain exactly what your grip is gonna help you do, and then you should adjust your grip according to those needs. Because you only have to turn on the telly to notice that golfers grip it differently. Some golfers grip it stronger, which basically means your lead hand is rotated more clockwise, and potentially your trail hand is as well. And then some pros grip it slightly weaker, which means obviously the opposite end of the spectrum. So it all depends, but the question really comes down to what are we trying to do with the grip and certainly as we'll go into this video what are we trying to avoid so the, the first factor really is that when we're taking hold of a golf club in, in the lead hand is obviously the club that you're generally positioned first what are we looking to do well the first thing is is that you want to understand that should we say the back of your forearm or the back of your lead wrist is an extension of the club face okay so this means that at a post impact position, so I've hit the golf ball, and then as I continue the club through in this post impact position here. So at this point in time, we need to ensure that the back of the lead wrist and the back of the left forearm is pointing towards the target, okay? So if we understand that, and you could almost imagine if I drew a line in here to represent like a wall, like a practice at home, if I started um, against the wall, like so, and I got the back of my lead wrist and, and back of the lead forearm flush against the wall, and then swung it back, and then I swung it flush against the wall. That would be the kind of exercise I want to practice. However, what happens with the golf grip is we don't position the ball there, we position the hands a little bit more inward. And as we position the hands more inward, what tends to happen is that the lead arm will tend to rotate slightly this way. So that's why this hand will end up looking this way as opposed to obviously looking, as I've mentioned beforehand, like so. So the first thing is to understand that, look, if you there theoretically from, from this, if you chose to rotate your hand more this way, that basically means that you've pre-rotated your hand, so you would have less arm rotation, so less of this sort of supernatural motion to square the face. So the stronger you grip it, the less rotation you have to do to square the face. Okay, so you can play around with that. That's absolutely fine. Continuing on this trial hand function, the other thing that you've got to do is you've got to position the club somewhere in the fingers, okay? Now, some people grip the club quite sort of close in the low part of the fingers and get the heel pad really sitting on top. This would kind of be quite a finger orientated grip. Some people sit the club a little bit closer towards the palm. This is more of a palm grip. It doesn't matter. What will happen is however you hold the club, if you're somebody who grips it more in the fingers, you'll notice more angulation between the back of the forearm and the back of the lead wrist. If you grip it closer towards the palm, you'd start to notice the way that would be a slightly flatter angle. Again, that's a preference, it's completely irrelevant. One of your biggest power sources in the golf swing is wrist cock. Okay, so the ability to cock the wrist is the increase the relationship between the club shaft and your lead arm. Obviously bring that down and then releasing that at the correct point in time helps us generate speed. So again, what you're trying to ensure that you do is when you're making a decision on how to hold the club, you just want to do it to such a way that you are able to produce this type of angulation. So if you're quite new to the game and you grip it closer to the palm, you'll notice that anatomically you can't create that angle, which is why you need to hold it more in the fingers. So understanding that the back of your lead wrist is a representative of your club face, but if you were to grip it strongly, that would take away some of the rotation. And then second, understanding that wrist cock is going to be a functionality on the back of this lead wrist position. The reason why I say that is because once you take hold of your club and you position your trail hand on, if you try and cock with your right wrist, okay, then what this will tend to do is this will tend to have an effect where the club shaft is going to get too vertical. And that's something that we don't want to be doing. So lead hand position is producing those. The question then fundamentally is, well, what is your trail hand going to be doing? Okay, so once you make a decision on, okay, well, I want to, you know, I want to position my hand somewhere like that and you, through the the parameters in this video you understand that's acceptable then what should your trail hand be doing well your trail hand as a, as a real role in functionality is going to do two things the first one is that it's going to produce a bit of a hinging action the best way to think about hinging action is quite simply this type of motion but what that does is it helps us keep the club on plane like the old analogy of balancing a tray of drinks if you're a waiter we don't want to be doing this or we don't want to be doing this. You want to kind of feel like you're retaining an element of wrist hinge because it helps us keep the golf club on plane. So this is kind of obviously a very useful uh, wrist motion that you need to introduce. When you introduce it, 
you know, pretty early actually. And you'll probably find that you do that quite naturally. That sort of first move tends to become a little bit of a hinging action as you move the club to the side of the body. The second thing really, and this is the most important one, is that your trail hand is helping you lift this arm up in the air and it's also helping you apply width on the outer circle of the golf swing. So when we look at pros and we know the data of how they move, professionals are always applying a force on the outward part of the circle like so, as I'm sort of demonstrating here, just to, for effect. And if you can do that, you can maximize the width in the swing, if you like, which will help you generate more speed. Most amateur golfers tend to get the arms too close to the body, and that's why you can't generate as much speed. So when you're positioning your trial hand on the club, what you want to ensure is that you're positioning your trail hand in such a way where you're able to get your right palm to sort of sit on top of the left thumb like so. So it's obviously helping you apply width, okay? So if you take it in towards your backswing position, one of the things that I tend to see with a lot of amateurs is when I get them to pause, I'll have a look and I'll notice the way the right palm is not in contact with the thumb and helping them apply force this way. So those are the functionalities. Those are the things that you want to be doing. When you're positioning this trail hand on the club, it's to help you keep this arm straight and to help you keep this arm straight because that's what it's doing. The trail hand is helping you elevate the club in the air and then it's helping you really push that club through coming in towards that hitting zone. So the question would be then, what are the things that you can't be doing? Reference the golf grip. And one of the things that I would say that you need to be cautious of because it's a common mistake is obviously doing things like positioning this hand on top you know, or positioning this hand indifferently because of hopefully this video will explain that if you have this hand sitting too much on top, you're not going to be able to apply a force. But aside from that, I'd say it comes very much down to the thumbs, okay? So in that lead hand, when you take hold of the golf club, what you should notice is the way that your thumb lives down. So for a right-handed golfer, my left thumb lives down the right-hand side of the club. So my lead hand lives down the trail side. This then means that my palm can sit in a supporting role and that my trail thumb sits on the lead side of the handle so my right thumb sits on the lead side and theoretically now my thumbs are in a position where neither neither side is too dominant so sometimes the students i'll tend to see that this lead thumb lives too much down the lead side of the handle and then the trail thumb also lives too much down the lead side of the handle and what this will do is this will leave the club face quite susceptible to being too open Equally, if the thumb, your lead thumb, leaves down the trail side of the handle and also does your trail thumb, then the worst case scenario is that you're gonna start closing the club face. Now, most amateur golfers I'm seeing are doing more and more of this, okay? I am seeing more amateur golfers go into a position where they're moving the thumb more around to the side of the handle, and that's kind of doing things like twisting the club face. And what's also happening then is because they're watching lots of videos and instructional videos, they're trying to do things like flatten the wrist. But if you start flattening the wrist with this type of uh, with this type of grip, the club face becomes so shut that the only way you can get that up in the air is to sort of lean back and it's becoming a big, big problem. So the idea of this video was quite simply just to have a conversation about the grip in terms of from a functionality perspective, what your hands are trying to do. And a great way to get a good feeling for whether your hands are working in unison or independently is to do some single-handed swings. So if I do some lead arm only swings here, back and through, okay, as long as I'm maintaining width, like so, and as long as I'm able to return that club face pretty square, then that's great, okay? And then if I do the same with my trail hand, support that width and support that width. And all of a sudden, if you can understand that's what you're trying to do, with each arm, then you should be able to find that they get really, they work really well together in unison. If I did the exercise now, lead hand only, and I had my hand in a sort of peculiar position, like I was gripping it too much in the palm, and my thumb was sitting down the wrong side of the club, there's, do you know what, there's no way that can be propelled forward because I just feel like the face is gonna be really left open. And it'd be the same in the trail hand. If the trail hand was quite peculiar positioned on top of the club, and let's say the thumb was, you know, or, or, or the thumb was underneath this way. So I mean, uh, it's gonna go around. So it's just a real simple way of not being told what to do. It's being told what you're doing and what it's stopping you from doing. So hopefully this video really helps you out. Like I say, these are genuine mistakes I am seeing. So I work a lot with students online and I work with a lot of students face to face. And this video, uh, this YouTube channel has always been orchestrated in and around what I'm seeing. 
So double check your grip, do a few swings lead hand only and trail hand only, and then that way you should be able to feel your hands working like they're in unison trying to achieve the same sort of goal.